What's up guys? There is a common issue in the Epic 7 Society that today that we're going to address. And that issue is re-rolling too much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not the issue. Re-rolling is not the issue. The issue is that after you re-roll, it's really, really hard to sit down and be like, okay, what is my team going to be? How do I even put together a team? I got all these units that were recommended to me in these reroll guides and these tier lists and the magical kingdom of select the right units. Like, you have these units, so now what do you do with them? So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to put together your very first team. But I get it. At first thought, you're like, who the hell is this guy to tell us how to build a team? So... Look, I'm just going to go over some of my personal stats here uh, so you guys can understand who, who I am as a player. I started playing here about three and a half weeks ago um, in terms of Wyvern, Golem, and Banshee. I haven't really started working on Banshee yet, but Wyvern, I'm working on my 10 team right now, my Auto 10, my Auto 10, and Golem. Um, and I'm also on floor 54 right now um, in the Abyss. Um, i got to work out some <laughs> elemental disadvantage issues so we can get past that and finish off that, that vamp set in there. That's pretty OP. Uh, spent a ton of energy, made all kinds of mistakes. If you guys haven't seen my new mistakes video, definitely check that out. Uh, but, you know, I, again, I wanted to wait till I got to a position of understanding how the overall game flows uh, in its current state before I started dropping like, yo, this is the guy that you guys need to see. Because uh, I really wanted to understand, take the time and understand like different units and different unit combos and, and really learn the units of the game before I felt like I was in a position to really give advice. Okay, so with that being said, uh, now that you guys understand who I am, oh, and my name's Damone, by the way, if you guys haven't saw the channel, Damone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now that you guys understand a little bit about who I am and uh, where I've come from, um, you know, in the three and a half weeks I've been playing this game, um, now I want to talk about ideal team builds in the beginning, okay? So check this out, guys. There are two units, one, two, in the beginning um, that you're going to need. Now, as we go through this guide, um, understand that I'm going to cover basic builds, I'm gonna cover um, types of equipment that you can use on these specific heroes if you guys are looking for a specific type and uh, basic dungeons that I recommend for you guys to farm up front uh, in order to put yourself in the strongest posi posi position based on your personal goals, like what's important to you, okay? So now let's go ahead and get back to this. Uh, the two units that are really, really important for you guys to have are basically Elson, okay, Elson. Else than this guy, he's one of the connections heroes. If you guys are looking at the left side of your screen in your bar, he's probably just standing there, just chilling or sitting or something. And he's like, Yo, man, can I come outside and play? And you're like, No, the street lights are on, stay in the house. <laughs> <laughs> but Elson, if you haven't picked him up, definitely pick him up. Uh, he's very, very useful. Annoying at times because he's a little squishy until he gets to 6-star. Um, but outside of that, he's still a great unit overall that can help to keep your team alive, period. Okay, so Elson, the reason why I mention Elson is because he's free. Everybody gets him. And there's no way that you cannot have him unless you fed him, unfortunately. Um, now, Elson, what makes him so great is that his ability is he buffs attack and defense on all units. Now, he'll have to be awakened, so you have to make sure that when you check the awakening chart, understand that your 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 team doesn't get their full abilities until you awaken them. So make sure you awaken them. It's all element weekend right now, or on an L, all element weekend or light day, make sure you get him to where he needs to be. Now, with that defense and attack buff, plus the heal on skill two that's proportionate to the allies, to your basically your whole your your whole team's max health um elson is really really effective okay now i know you guys are probably like yeah but they i heard that they're gonna nerf the defense buff probably okay but they'll scale it back a little bit it's not going to be to the point where it's just not effective anymore defense buff and attack buff will always be effective no matter what stage of the meta the game is in. so do yourself a favor if you guys are starting out the game no matter what you've researched or heard or rumored about like the Elson is still a very, very solid unit, and I recommend him pretty much on all starting comps, okay? Now, understand that Elson is just a beast, okay? So we're going to talk about these supports first because, like I said, everybody has them. Now, the other unit is your optional, okay? And this depends on what you guys have re-rolled or pulled or whatever, but if you guys didn't re-roll or if you guys just was like, F it, I'm going with all damage dealers, um, Aether, the one that a lot of people talk trash about because this is a trap and all that other stuff, is still a solid unit. Now, the reason why a lot of people overlook Aether is because Aether is hard to build because he scales with attack. Uh, notice the emphasis on he. <laughs> but he, he scales with attack. So what that means is his heals get stronger based on his attack 
and his shield that he puts up with a very low cooldown on skill 3 also scales with attack. Um, so what that means is he's harder to build than most starter support units. Okay, so what what happens is a lot of people don't really understand how to build these units. You know, uh, I, I wouldn't have if I didn't play, you know, Summer's War for years. But what what happens is is players misbuild these units and they're like, oh, the heal is garbage. When in reality, a Aether is actually pretty beasty uh, with some decent gear. Okay, not saying that my gear is decent, but he's actually pretty beasty. Okay, so I just wanted to talk about that. Now, the secondary unit, though, guys, le legit is going to be any healer. Okay, so let me let me explain explain to you what I mean by any healer. It could be Aether. It could be uh, legit. It could be Lots. It could be Akatis. It could be um, pretty much any <laughs> legit any healer. <laughs> Any healer in that slot. Now, I recommend four-star heroes like Rin, uh, Angelica, uh, you know, all that other jazz. But legit, if you guys don't have that, use Hazel, okay? You guys can legit use Hazel. Montmorency, is, she's all right. She's decent. Uh, but again, you know, yeah. Hazel, Hazel's a dope one. Also free unit connection. But pretty much any healer in that slot can go. And I know your next question is, well, what about element disadvantage? Isn't like fire weak against water and, and wind weak against fire and all that? Absolutely. But the reality is, is if you guys are going all in on your first two supports, which is basically Elson and uh, whatever heal you choose, Rin and whoever, whoever you guys have, um, if you guys are going all in on these two units, you don't really have to worry about it. They'll be able to, to take the brunt of the damage and do whatever it is that you need to do. Trust me. Okay. So... When you have those two units, lock them in in your mind. So in your brain, if you guys are looking through your box right now, or you're thinking, okay, well, okay, Elson plus whoever you guys have chosen, you guys are going to lock them in. Those are going to be literally the st the staple, the foundation of your team, and they're going to do what you, do what you got to do for the rest of the game, and you're not going to switch out. You're not going to build multiple healers. You're not going to be like, well, I need this healer for PvP and this healer for McDonald's, and I need this healer over here at Walmart and Target and ShopRite. You're not going to do any of that. <laughs> for my Australian family out there, World War surplus you don't need you <laughs> you don't need them for that either okay so what that's going to put you in a position to do is start to build your one foundational team uh, that's going to allow you to build other teams from that team okay and with that laser like focus is going to allow you to progress a lot faster than say I did who took three weeks to get to 10 because I was too busy trying to build a million different teams okay so that's what you're going to do. You're going to lock in Elson, and you're going to lock in plus one for the healer. Uh, that's who he's going to the party with, and then you guys are going to go all in. We're going to talk about building these units uh, a little bit later in the video, so have your pen and paper, or whatever you guys need to do. Um, but just be ready for that, because we're going to talk about how to build these, these units here uh, in just a little bit. But those are the first two units you're going to pick. Now, next step, damage dealers literally any two damage dealers based on what you are trying to accomplish okay so for instance if you guys are trying to beat wyvern water and fire are going to be the primary elements that you guys can be looking for so you can do like a says and a haste you can do says and surat you can do pretty much any water fire combo <laughs> like legit if you guys are going for wyvern which you probably are and we'll talk about why here closer to the end of the video um, but that's ideally what you're looking for. Or you can go do like a Tiaria because Tiaria is OP. You can do Tiaria plus one. But literally any water fire unit is going to be your starter team. Okay. Any water fire unit for Wyvern. If you guys are trying to go for Golem first because you guys want those health, you know, the health items or you guys want, um, you know, whatever's from Golem, the attack items, the, the defense. If you guys are going for those, then you guys are going to be looking for primarily a win team. Or a fire, uh, excuse me, yeah, wind or fire. Okay, so wind or fire for gold. Now, wind or fire, you know, Tenebria, Kyrus. Kyrus is another good one. Um, where, where is my girl Kyrus at? Kyrus, Kyrus, Kyrus. Kyrus is great. Namunas is great. Uh, she's also a three star hero. Archer deals damage proportionate to the enemy's max HP. Um, who else? Surin, uh, but pretty much any unit that deals damage over time. Now, if you guys are looking specifically at Golem, there's a couple of things that you guys are going to need. Now, if you guys are looking at Golem, you guys are looking for units that deal recovery block, so basically block healing. You're looking for units that um, break attack and break defense, okay? 
That's that's about it. So lower attack, lower defense. Those are the th three primary staples you're looking for. Uh, but again, that's more advanced stuff, and we'll get into that later. We're not trying to like overwhelm you with that 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 nonsense today. <laughs> but but uh, got off on the tangent. But ideally, like I said, guys, depending on what your goal is. So if you're going for golem, you're looking for those specific elements. If you're going for wyvern, there or wyvern, excuse me, you guys are going for uh, you know water or fire. Now, once you have those teams, and again, um, I recommend wyvern first or wyvern first because it's going to allow you to transition into arena faster okay because if you're faster than the team especially early arena well really a lot of the arena you win um like i'm pulling into challenger three i'm working on getting a challenger three right now um but if you're faster than the opponent you win <laughs> as long as your team count is sound okay so I, I recommend uh wyvern first and and you know so lock in your attackers whoever those two are water fire combo plus your healer plus elson and you legit have your first team comp now your next question is okay so all right so now i'm running my i'm running my elson i'm running elson i'm running i don't know angelica i'm running um i don't know let's do some random units here I'm running Carrot, and I'm running, uh, let's see, Water Unit, um, Carrot, and Dominio, <laughs> right? Random team, super random team. How do you build these units, okay? So first, what we're going to look at is, I want to talk to you guys about your supports, because uh, especially early on before you guys start getting into speed runs and crazy, insane builds and all that other jazz, uh, you guys really need to understand how to build the foundation of your team, and the foundation of your team will be your supports up front, okay? So, I do not want you to, to use my Angelica as an example, even though we're using her example, because she's slow as balls, all right? Listen, <laughs> she's snail slow, okay? And this is not what you want, okay? Um, matter of fact, let me use Aether instead, because I just threw some runes, uh, threw some gear on Oh girl. But ideally, what you guys are looking at... Requiem, okay. Requiem instead, okay. Yeah, Requiem's now. Requiem's a bad example. <laughs> you, I know you guys are cursing me out right now. You guys are like, bro, pick pick somebody, pick somebody, and tell us how to build our team. All right, do it. All right, fine. We'll use Angelica. Where you at, Angelica? All right. So we we'll use Angelica. So what I want you guys to keep in mind is that ideally, what you're looking at it for on your supports is three things. Uh, you're looking for speed, you're looking for HP, and you're looking for defense, period. Okay, those are the three primary things you're going to be looking for. We'll talk about the other two, which are effectiveness and effect resistance here in a bit. But speed, HP, and defense are the primary sets you're going to look looking for in order of importance, okay? And they're all important. They're all like right here, <laughs> all right? So the reason why you're looking for speed, HP, and defense is because, A, you want your unit to have as many turns as possible, which is why... Um, Speed is so important because speed affects how fast they move down that little bar on the left side of your screen. And the faster they are, the faster they go through the bar, the more turns they get. Okay, more turns your healer gets, more chance for your team to stay alive, and then you don't die, and then you win. Okay, unless the rest of your team dies, which is a problem. Okay, but uh, speed is ideally what you're looking for. HP and defense are really, really important because with units like, for instance, Angelica, here, let me uh, go back to her skills. Her heal scales with uh, her max health. So it's proportional to her max health, and a lot of healers are like that, to be on honest. Um, so you'll have to really look at you know these heroes and really understand what their skills scale with. And since those, that's, those healing skills scale with HP, you want to make sure that she has as much HP as possible, especially if your healer scales with HP. Um, and as you get more HP, more defense, you get more survivability, and your heals scale accordingly. Um, so that way, when you heal, you're healing for two or three thousand instead of like five hundred, right? And then so that way, no matter what's going on, if your team is in a in a bind, your heal pops, boom, your healers fast, they're going as many times as possible, and they're just keeping those cooldowns up. Now you can do things uh, specifically to help your your unit by putting the prof prophetic candlestick, especially if you're running your healer in the front. Uh, which allows them to have a specific chance to reduce the time they have to wait in order to use their skills again if they're being attacked, which is very, very useful in healers. And honestly, one of the most ideal cards that I recommend, unless you guys are rocking like five-star cards like the Rods and Rod of Amarius or, you know, stuff like that. But this is this is one of the easiest cards to get and it's really 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 good to have on any kind of support or unit that has relatively long cooldowns or you need to have their skills up 
as much as possible, okay? Now let's talk about ideal builds. Now, basically, uh, like I mentioned, the three most important stats you guys are gonna have are speed, HP, and defense. So what that means is most of the time there's gonna be a speed set uh, or a speed boot on you if you're able to get it. If you get a speed boot, then just go ahead and chuck it in there and just have a nice day. Um, now, there are going to be some instances later game, end game, you know, when there is an end game where you have boots that have health on the boots, but the speed subsets are so high that, you know, these people are running without speed on the boots. But until then, speed on the boots is probably going to help you out, okay? Then basically what you're going to put on your, your necklace and your... Uh, your ring or health percent and defense percent now the thing I need you guys to understand is that don't fret if you guys don't have your rings or necklaces yet I was stressing out so much in the beginning of the game because I was like ah oh, gang gang gear labyrinth ain't dropping nothing my ancient coins suck every time I'm opening these boxes I'm just getting confetti um, but it's just gonna take time guys it's just one of those things so what I need you guys to do is while you guys are waiting to get these perfect pieces of gears you guys see I still don't have them um, and this is this is this is not a well built unit by any by any means, <laughs> but it's just going to take some time. Um, and so when you guys are doing this, that's what you guys are looking for. You're looking for speed on boots for supports, HP or defense on ring or necklace. Okay. Now on your other gear, other sets of gear, so your weapon, your helmet, and your your thing, your ideal, you're looking for speed, health, and defense, three most important stats plus one. So effect resistance or effectiveness. If you guys are looking or excuse me if you guys are using a unit that applies harmful effects that you need specifically units like Elson who has attack break which is really really good in pretty much every instance of the game um, but that's what you're gonna be looking for if you if you just have a healer who doesn't really apply any harmful effects and you're just trying to keep them alive then effective uh, effect resistance is Resistance-ness? Resistance-ness. We just made that up. Effect resistance-ness <laughs> is what you guys need uh, as a substat when you guys are looking at building these particular types of units. Now, in terms of gear sets, if you guys notice, I got a double HP defense set on her. Uh, ideally, what you guys are going to be looking for are sets from Wyvern, which are the speed sets. Okay, Speed set makes it easier for them to get speed, plus a speed boot, or uh, again, good speed substats, and then you guys can just run an HP or a def boot, and you guys are good and again HP percent or defense percent not flat okay no flat only flat sets you guys will ever want to see in your life uh, on this side of the map here on this side of the screen are percentages and or in your substats so uh, the only flat substats you want to see on these subs is speed you still want health percent you want defense percent so if you got an item like um, this here with this health plus 58 uh -uh. Mm -mm. nope mm -mm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not ideal, but again, it's something that you'll fix over time. So, again, quick rundown. Any type of support unit, again, speed, HP, def, primary important stats, you're looking for swift sets, speed sets, okay? Speed sets plus whatever, plus vitality, plus defense, plus effective, uh, the accuracy one, uh, whatever. But speed sets plus whatever. Uh, boots are going to be speed, HP, or def, primarily speed. Um, and then, of course, rings and necklaces, HP percent or defense percent. And then once you guys got that, you're good to go, okay? Now, let's talk about these damage dealing units. And we're not referring, we'll talk about those Moonlight Kins and HP scaling units after this, after uh, we talk about the attackers. But first, I want you guys to get a, a real fundamental understanding of how an attacker should be built. And we use my says as an example. He's still a five star right now. I haven't six starred him yet. Um, but he's, he's a good example so you guys can see kind of where your stats. So, what I'm going to tell you right now is stats over sets. Okay? Sets are great. Woo! Ideal sets, woo! But stats are what you're looking for over sets. Now, if your sets can help you get those stats, then you're good to go, okay? <laughs> so, remember I said this, because I'm gonna be saying this again a lot of times over the next couple years, all right? So anyway, when you guys are looking at attackers, so the three primary stats you guys are looking for are attack percent, crit rate, and crit damage, okay? Uh, I didn't just flip you off, that was just like the order of my fingers. Sorry, don't be offended. <laughs> But uh, but anyway, um, so attack percent, crit rate, and crit damage. So attack percent, uh, attack or attack power is basically how hard your particular unit is going to be hitting. Okay, whatever unit that is. So if you have a mage, like let's say we're running the carrot and the tenebria account that we 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 uh, mentioned before, not tenebria, um, 
Dominio, sorry. Uh, Dominio. So let's say we ran Dominio and like Tenebria or Dominio and Carrot or whoever, whoever we decided to run. The attack power is basically how high uh, or how hard your, your, your current character is going to hit. The higher you get this, the more damage you deal. Now your critical hit chance is basically um, your chance for bonus damage. Okay, So if your, your character, like says, has an 87% chance to crit, he has an 87% chance to deal bonus the 157 percent bonus damage okay so the higher you can get your attack your crit rate and your crit damage the harder your character is going to hit it's real simple um now what you guys want to be cognizant of is if you don't have any crit chance having a lot of crit damage doesn't really help you so like if you guys are running like a crit damage necklace and you guys don't have no crit chance you're basically just wasting a slot now in the case where a lot of people are right now where you just i mean we just don't have a lot of gear right now because we haven't been playing the game that long then running a crit damage neck isn't really going to hurt much you know if that's the only thing you got then by all means put it there but ideally what you guys are looking for is to maximize the crit rate the crit damage and the attack now the other two stats that apply here are effectiveness okay and speed effectiveness and speed now these two things are going to come into play uh, on your unit, so speed and effectiveness are going to come to play for Wyvern, which is really important because in Wyvern you need, need to land harmful effects, okay? Harmful effects are very, very important in a Wyvern situation, especially when it comes to clearing it quickly, efficiently, and keeping your team alive initially. And I'm explain to you guys why. In Wyvern, why in the Wyvern? <laughs> Put the Y in Vern. Um, in Wyvern, you have to have land a harmful effect so he doesn't get multiple turns. If you don't land a harmful effect, he gets multiple turns. Um, when you get to higher stages, aka when you pull into Wyvern 9, uh, if you don't land two harmful effects at least, he will go twice, right? So, yeah, just understand that Wyvern ramps. Um, so, with that being said, effectiveness is going to be important on those types of attackers. So, units like Curus, okay? Damage dealer who's, who's used for uh, gold. Okay? Or units like Surin, who's used for Golem and for Wyvern, need to have a decent amount of effectiveness, not 4%. This is the problem that I ran into, I'm still running into, trying to fix now, that I built all my units with literally 0% effectiveness. <laughs> so I'm like, man, well, how come we can't land negative effect? Well, probably that negative 2% effectiveness that you have. So that's something that I'm fixing now. Uh, still finding success, but my runs will be a lot smoother um, if I had effectiveness. So make sure you guys keep that in mind. Now, Speed. The other thing. Speed is is beneficial on all attackers. Let me just say that. It's beneficial on all attackers, no matter who it is. I'm just telling you guys about the effectiveness part. So if, if you guys are trying to get into Wyvern and you guys can't figure it out, that's why you're failing. Okay? That's the lack of effectiveness, especially if you're making it to boss. Now, uh, speed is just one of those things that as the game develops, and you guys mark my words, it's going to end up being the most important stat until... Um, you know, you get stats good enough to where you can go like second turn or, you know, team caps and all that. Again, I'm not going to overwhelm you guys with all that mumbo jumbo. That's not necessary for this video, but understand speed is important. If you guys can get it, it's always a ideal substat. It helps your, your units, your team out, helps them get more turns, helps make them more effective. Okay. But the reason why I, re I recommended those as kind of like the tail end is because starting out in the game, attack, crit rate, and crit damage are going to be mo the most important thing for seeing damage output on your units, PVE wise period because chances are you're running other stuff in your team that's going to help you get more turns anyway right so anyway uh so that's ideally what you're going to be looking at now in terms of what you're going to be building on their gear it doesn't really matter to be honest like you can put an attack set from golem in there you can put your attackers on a speed set you can put your attackers on the bam set that you're going to get from the abyss um pretty much anything again this is really one of those things where it's stats before gear or excuse me stats before sets um, but like I said, anything can go on these guys. It doesn't really matter. It could be health set, defense, whatever. Um, but what matters is that you get the stats and you get the things on the right side of the screen. Basically, your boots, your, your, your ring, and your neck that match. So boots, attack percent all day with primary subs. So this one, speed, crit. I got some effectiveness here, which is good. Uh, the health is nice, uh, although I pr prefer for that to be something else. Let me like crit damage or something. But, um, but yeah, there you have it. Necklace, speed, crit, health, effectiveness, you know, same thing. Uh, these two pieces were from the Abyss. You guys get these as you go through the Abyss, so beat the Abyss. And then, of course, my, my necklace here, I went with crit chance, uh, and the, the substats on this are, are kind of whack. Uh, I like the attack percent, I like the effectiveness, but the top two could go, like crit damage and speed, that'd be perfect. Um, 
But I went with crit chance here because I don't have a that was the only thing that I had for him at the time and uh, I didn't have enough crit rate to really maximize the crit damage so I went ahead and put a crit chance next. Now how this will evolve is as my sub stats get better like with these crit chance subs get higher uh, how that will evolve is this necklace will eventually change to a crit damage necklace and I'll be running them attack attack crit damage right and that that's how I how I will manage my attackers. Now if you guys are looking for ideal stats you're looking for 100% crit Okay, 100% crit and as much crit damage as possible. So 200%, 220, 240, 250, 300. <laughs> but you guys get the idea. Uh, as high as possible, the higher you guys see these numbers go, the better off you'll be. So that, that's going to be the thing. So um, that's pretty much it in terms of establishing your first team. Elson plus a healer. Those are your primary supports. You'll go all in on those guys because they're going to be with you for a very long time. Plus your two damage dealers. Your two damage dealers literally can be anybody. 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 Okay. Now the thing that you're going to be paying attention to is their element. Okay. And what they bring to the fight. So preferably if you're going for Golem, you're looking for poison damage over time. If you're going for Wyvern, you're looking for any type of harmful effect. Um, you know, attack break, defense break. And again, like those attack break and defense break guys are the staples of building a team though. So make sure you have those two in your team, period. Attack break, defense break. Defense break more important than attack break, but definitely, definitely, definitely defense break, okay? Um, and then once you guys have that, I mean, you guys have a team, period. It's done. Like, you don't you don't have to worry about it for a long time. Now, a technique that I recommend that I learned over the years, not playing this game, but playing Gashi games in general, is you want to learn how to do hand-me-downs, okay? So... What I mean by that is, let's say your initial team is going to be, let's say, Elson. It's going to be um, Elson, I don't know, Angelica, uh, or Katis. And let's say you're running, like, Tiaria, okay? Tiaria, where my girl Tiaria, right, for the defense break and the uh, team get more turns action. And, I don't know, Surin, okay? Let's say, let's say that's your team. You know, when you have this team, like, you know, now you got your effectiveness, you got your defense break going, and you have this team set up to where it's positioned to do both Wyvern and Giant, or, and, and Golem, okay? So Wyvern and Golem, you got it. Now all you have to do is go all in on this team and build this this team up, get them the best gear that you possibly can. Now what's going to happen is eventually you're going to get to a ceiling, okay? And that ceiling is... Uh, all right, it's really hard for me to get better gear for them. So what's going to happen is now you'll get a gear piece. You'll put it on one of these units. Let's say now I just replaced Surin's Invisible Ring with the new legendary almighty McDonald's legendary ring that I got out of a Happy Meal. Now I'm going to take this old Invisible Ring and I'm going to put that on somebody else. Okay? So because, uh, you know, I've been eyeing myself like, oh, man, I want to build my says, but I ain't got no gear. Right? Now, what you could do is you could take that ring off of Surin, who you just upgraded, and then take the old ring and throw that on Sez and be like, mm, now Sez got some gear. And over time, what that's going to allow you to do is have a really solid team that you can pretty much use for Arena, you can use for, you know, other stuff. Not not saying that's, that's an effective strategy for Arena. <laughs> Again, it depends on what your team is. Okay, let me just say that. But it's, it's, it's the idea that by focusing on one team, one primary team, is going to allow you to build that team and progress faster. Not like this guy, me, uh, who forgot that lesson that I learned a long time ago and tried to build every unit that I had up front. And now I just got all kinds of just random stuff built. But focusing on that one team up front is going to allow you to progress through the game quickly. Then you can get gear, you can build whatever you need. You're like, oh, okay, cool. Now I got the solid team, but I want to build, uh, you know, because uh, I got my, you know, my T area she's built. I need to get her faster. So now she's faster. Now I can make an adjustment. Now I can just sub out a unit for Arena, and then you're good to go. Right, so what, I, what I've given you guys is kind of like a sample team comp as well too that you can use in multiple situations. You can use for PvP, you can use for um, you know, basically all the dungeon comps except for Banshee, um, and really get yourself in a very, very strong position. Now, in terms of progression, I mean, again guys, I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I recommended Wyvern over Golem, mainly because even though you're gonna pretty much be doing both, I mentioned Wyvern over Golem is because 
the faster your team is, especially early on, the more turns you're going to get. And it's going to allow you to position yourself in arena quickly. If you guys are trying to just help and get those rank up crystals that you guys need, um, what I recommend, again, is going to going to wyvern first it's going to give you the speed jump it's going to allow you to get your stats wherever they need to be plus crit sets drop there which is nice um and, and you can get those speed base sets on your units that way you pretty much only got to farm one type of gear um well, kind of one type of gear to make your team stronger um you could pop into golem too if you guys need that golem gear uh like you know the the health offsets and the defense offsets are great uh you guys can definitely chuck those in there too but wyvern is definitely 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 the way you want to spin it okay um so if you got win that fives well i'm <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but ideally, that's what I recommend. You can do whatever you want. You want to go to Banshee first, go to Banshee. You want to do Golem first, go to Golem. Uh, but in my experience, uh, my personal opinion, I think Wyvern is the best way to go up front, um, you know, based on that initial team recommendation um, that I've, I've just given you. Can you make uh, Wyvern work with a Wind Attacker? Sure. It's just going to be a hell of a lot more difficult. Okay. Um, after Wyvern six. Okay. After after Wyvern six, it's it's kind of difficult. Uh, but after that, but before that, honestly, I think you guys will be fine. But overall, guys, I mean, that's pretty much all you need to build. You know, your your very first team. I know it's it's really tough too. Like you know, after you get done rerolling, you got all these units, or you guys are pulling a bunch of units, and you really don't know how to formulate a team. But that's pretty much it. One support, Elson, plus a healer, and plus two. Okay. That's your party. That's that's who's going to prom. That team is going to prom. All right. And, um, you know, I mentioned Tiaria because Tiaria is so OP. Uh, if you guys want to put Tiaria in your comp, because legit, you can use her for all comps, every single one of them. You can run Tiaria plus one uh, for your damage dealers. If you guys don't want to think about it too much, Tiaria plus one. Whoever your plus one is, is up to you. But Tiaria plus one, Tiaria is also a three star. And I've basically given you guys a three star comp that you guys can use. So Elson Aether, Elton. El Elson, Elson, Hazel, um, Tiaria, and and X, and you guys are Gucci. So, again, if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, if I said anything that was confusing, definitely let me know, and then we'll kind of break it down in detail. But in t today's guide, I really just wanted to give you guys a, uh, a like a, a real strong format that you guys can kind of follow and kind of uh, mix and match and do what you guys need to do based on the units that you've pulled, uh, not on what somebody else would be like, yo, <laughs> you have to use this. You don't have to use anything. Uh, just use what you got, and then you guys can formulate that team strategy. So uh, with that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy, Damone, um, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Happy holidays. Peace.